Joseph was at his wit's end. He had frantically looked through every box of his few personal belongings. He searched all through the small desk he was given when he started serving as an assistant priest. He thumbed through all the books he had recently been reading. Where was that piece of paper? It was his last hope to salvage a disastrous series of events that had come about over the past few days. So much had gone into the Christmas Eve gathering, the last thing he needed was the church organ to be broken. He had a matter of just a few hours before people would begin to gather in the newly constructed church. The few lines that he had scrawled on a piece of paper would be perfect for just such a service. No one would even realize the newly installed organ was not working. But where was it? As he lifted a stack of his writings from the bedside table, a slightly crinkled slip of paper drifted to the floor. Ah, there it is. He picked up the paper and reviewed its words. It's not much, but it'll have to do, he thought to himself. What Joseph Moore didn't know is that the lyrics to the little poem he had penned two years earlier would forever become part of the Christmas celebrations of not only his small Austrian Alpine village, but the entire world. The gentle song would become the centerpiece of reflection and worship for the Savior King, born in a Bethlehem stable. I'm Ronnie Brown, and this is Forgotten. Josephus Franciscus Moore was born in Salzburg, Austria on December the 11th, 1792. His birth was not under the best of circumstances. His mother Anna was young and unmarried. His father Franz was a mercenary soldier and deserter who abandoned Anna months before the birth of Joseph. Needless to say, Joseph's childhood was one of difficulty and poverty. Anna and her son lived in a small room with Anna's mother. She earned a very meager income with embroidery and knitting. Being born out of wedlock made Joseph somewhat of an outcast to the community. Consequently, he spent much of his time alone on long walks throughout the community. One day, he wandered into the Salzburg Cathedral and had a chance encounter with the leader of music, Johann Hernley. The choir master and the fatherless boy would become fast friends. Hernley would become somewhat of a foster father to the boy and with this encouragement, young Joseph began to participate in different aspects of church life, one of which was the choir and the music of the church. Hernley recognized the boy's interest and his natural talent in music. Over the coming years, he would see to it that Joseph would receive a proper education. Although he learned to play the guitar, the violin, and the organ, Joseph chose to dedicate his life to the service of God. After attending schools in various cities, he entered seminary in 1811. And on the 21st of August, 1815, Mar graduated and was ordained a priest at the age of 23. The life of a young Catholic priest was a very uncertain one. It is usually made up of a series of brief and difficult years of ministry here and there. Father Moore's would be no different. His first appointment was to provide temporary help in the village of Ramsu near Berchtesgaden on the Austrian-German border. It was not too long before he was relocated to serve in the village of Maria Far, where his grandfather lived. This lovely Alpine village, nestled in the Austrian Alps, was a far cry from the days of his childhood. It is here, during this time, under circumstances that are lost to history that Joseph Marr would write the lyrics to one of the most beloved Christmas songs of all time, Silent Night. But these six brief stanzas would be stowed away, unused for two full years. During the summer of 1817, illness forced Joseph out of the secluded village of Maria Far into the city of Salzburg. After a quick recovery, he was assigned to be a temporary assistant in the nearby village of Oberndorf. 
and by October of that year, the temporary assignment became a permanent one. He served under the direction of the parish priest, George Heinrich Nussler. Things were not easy for the young priest. Father Nussler seemed to have it out for the young man. He accused him of, quote, neglecting his priestly duties, frequenting drinking locales, joking with persons of the opposite sex, and singing songs which do not edify, end quote. But not everyone agreed with this criticism. Nearby church officials familiar with Joseph and other town leaders in Obendorf testified to the fact that these accusations were unfounded. While serving the people of Obendorf on Christmas Eve, 1818, Joseph had a crisis on his hands. The church organ, its main source of music, was not functioning. All the plans for the midnight Christmas Eve service were centered around the organ music. He needed a simple song that could be played by him on the guitar. Fortunately, he remembered a nativity poem that he had written back in Maria Far. He took the handful of verses and set out on foot to the nearby village of Arnsdorf. During his ministry at Obendorf, Joseph became friends with a schoolmaster by the name of Franz Gruber. Although Gruber lived and taught school in Arnsdorf, he was the church organist and choirmaster of the town of Obendorf. After a cold walk to his friend's house, the two sat down with the poem Moore had written and Gruber composed a simple melody, one that could be easily played by Joseph on his guitar. Later that evening, the two men performed for the first time the song Silent Night to the handful of worshipers that had gathered for that Christmas Eve service, fittingly enough, at St. Nicholas Church. One can only imagine how their hearts swelled with love for the heavenly gift of the Holy Child Jesus. Echoing off the cathedral walls for the very first time were those familiar words, Silent Night, Holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. The song itself might have been lost to history had it not been for the organ repairman that came a few days later to inspect the instrument. Carl Malrocker, a member of the famed family of pipe organ builders, was told of the near disaster on Christmas Eve and how it was turned into one of the most memorable services they had enjoyed in many years. Malrocker obtained a copy of the song, and as the craftsman stopped at church after church to care for the pipe organs, he shared the delightful song, simply calling it a regional folk song. The song was heard by the Strasser family that made their living by crafting fine silk gloves. Their four children would sing the mountain folk song out in front of the Strasser market booth. Crowds would flock to hear the tender song of the Savior's birth from the mouths of these children. Word spread of the children's quartet and the new song they were singing. Invitation after invitation came for them to sing the beautiful song until finally they were singing the folk song in front of the Austrian king and queen. The song Silent Night was published in a German hymn book in 1839, where it was then shared to America through German-speaking congregations. Its first English publication was in a book of children's songs in 1863. As far as Joseph Moore, like many priests in those times, he moved around quite a bit. He would leave Obendorf in the following year of 1819. Between the years of 1819 and 1827, Moore would serve in nine different parishes, each no longer than a couple of years. But his last two places of service were for much longer stays. He spent 10 years in Hintersee and 11 years in Walgreen. It was there in Walgreen that his ministry had the deepest impact he led the community to construct a large two-story school building. He gave particular focus to the poor and the needy, doing all that he could to provide food and shelter for the desperate members of his parish. Joseph Moore died on December the 4th, 1848. He did so 
with hardly any possessions to his name, just as poor as when he entered the world in 1792. He gave whatever wealth he amassed for the education of youth in his parish, as well as for the care of the aged. Yet all of us are enriched every Christmas as we peer into that silent holy night and behold that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Forgotten is written and produced by me, Bonnie Brown. You can find out more about this show at ForgottenPodcast.com. I'm also on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Forgotten Podcast. Every month, two new episodes of Forgotten are released publicly. But in the off weeks, I do produce additional episodes called Forgotten Glimpses. These are episodes with the same encouraging and inspiring stories, the same production quality, only a little shorter. These are available through Patreon, a safe and secure website that allows people to support individual creativity. For just $5 a month, you can help support the production costs of this podcast and get more forgotten in your life. Just go over to ForgottenPodcast.com slash support for more information. Forgotten is also available on various podcasting apps such as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Downcast. Be sure to stop into iTunes and leave a review. And as always, thanks for listening.